The British royal family is worth an astounding 20 billion dollars. Stay with us to see what else they've been hiding. You are watching The Financial Educator, here to teach you what they should have taught in school. Although we couldn't possibly narrow down the Queen's network to a precise figure, many well-known royal income streams still provide a fair estimate. Sure, the details of their financial world are highly classified, yet the major money driving forces are rather in plain sight. So how much money did the Queen have, and what has been left for the King now? Keep watching to find out. Prior to her death, the majority of Queen Elizabeth II's family's annual income and expenses were covered by public and private sources, a major portion of which came from the Sovereign Grant. If you have never heard of it, then let us explain. The Sovereign Grant the monarch's formal duties and the expenses for maintaining the royal palaces have been financed by the Sovereign Grant, a government-administered annual grant since 2012. As stated on the official website of the British monarchy, funding for the Sovereign Grant comes from a percentage of the profits of the Crown Estate Revenue. The Sovereign Grant for 2021-2022 to was budgeted at £86.3 million, representing £1.29 per UK citizen. Traditionally, the Queen received 15% of the Crown Estate income in the last two years, with the remaining going to the government. However, it was settled that she would get 25% for the following decade beginning in 2017. This will contribute to the £369 million refurbishment plan of Buckingham Palace. But how did all of this begin? History of Crown Estate The Crown Estate was originally the term coined for lands held by the monarch, and it dates all the way back to the Norman Conquest. In 1760, King George III came to an agreement with the government to give up his earnings from the Crown Estate. In exchange, the king, as well as his successors, would receive a fixed annual sum known as the Civil List. The Crown Estate technically belongs to the reigning monarch, but as their website states, it is not the private property of the monarch, it cannot be sold by the monarch, nor do revenues from it belong to the monarch. It is currently managed by the board of an independent organization. In 2010, the sovereign grant replaced the civil list. Now regardless of the fluctuations in Crown Estate's profits, the Queen would continue to receive the very same grant as the previous year, which would be covered by the Treasury. The Sovereign Grant Act of 2011 implemented this rule, so no matter how rapidly inflation hikes and businesses collapse, it surely doesn't affect the royals. However, this wasn't the only income stream the Queen had. There is so much more to unravel here. The Privy Purse If you are picturing a small pink velvety purse lined with gold that the Queen might have hidden under her hat, then sadly, that might not be the case. Because no matter what you're envisioning right now, the Privy Purse is nothing of the ordinary. Let's start with the fact that it is not an actual purse. In case you already didn't know that, the Privy Purse is a very royal way of referring to the revenue produced by a very large plot of land. Property, as well as assets, called the Duchy of Lancaster. Here's how that works. The Duchy of Lancaster. Queen Elizabeth wasn't just Her Majesty, she was also the Duke of Lancaster. This massive possession, which was established in 1399, proved to be a significant source of fortune for the Queen. The Duchy of Lancaster is an ancient legacy that started more than 750 years ago in 1265, and has evolved over the years. It began when Henry III gifted land seized by the Earl of Leicester, Simon de Montfort, to his son Edmund Crouchbank. It continues to this day. The monarch also always serves as the Duke of Lancaster, thus the classic Lancastrian toast, the King, Duke of Lancaster. For both kings and queens, the title Duke is always employed. The rural estates consists of 18,481 hectares of land in England and Wales and comprise commercial, agricultural, and residential properties. The majority of these are located in Lancashire, Yorkshire, Cheshire, Staffordshire, and Lincolnshire. The duchy also owns a sizable portfolio of commercial real estate, which is primarily located in London Savoy District off the Strand, a portfolio of financial investments, and a modest portfolio of urban residential properties. According to Statista, the former Duchy of Lancaster, Queen Elizabeth II, received about 21.98 million British pounds in 2021 and 2022, showcasing an increment of almost 400,000 pounds from the preceding year. Before moving forward to the third main income stream that Queen had, if you are enjoying this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, as it is no less than an honorary accolade for us. So how rich does that make King Charles? According to CNN, 
Prior to becoming the King of the United Kingdom, Charles and his wife Camilla Parker Bowles, now Camilla, Queen Consort, received 90% of their income from the private estate called the Duchy of Cornwall, which was founded in 1337 to financially support the successor of the throne. The Duchy of Cornwall receives funding through the ownership and management of land in rural and urban regions, as well as from renting cottages and islands in Wales, Cornwall, and other parts of the United Kingdom. The Duchy of Cornwall generated $28 million for Charles and Camilla in 2018. After his mother's passing, the newly crowned King Charles III inherited the nearly $28 billion in assets that belonged to the Crown Estate together, with Buckingham Palace, the Duchy of Lancaster, the Duchy of Cornwall, Kensington Palace, and the Crown Estate Scotland, bringing his estimated net worth to $600 million. Although the King has access to a number of benefits that are not available to the average Briton, such as a broad exemption for most taxes, the majority of the King's and his family's holdings are associated with real estate. As a result, their value is responsive to the nation's economic dynamics, such as the double-digit inflation that is currently upsetting businesses. It is no surprise that these monarchs couldn't make the list of the richest people in the world. However, there is no denying that these are mere estimates, and we couldn't possibly pinpoint a particular financial figure for the royals. Many believe that the wealth lying behind those fortified walls is much more than we could fathom, and these calculations could be way off. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notifications to keep yourself updated for our future videos. Thank you for watching!